There are people out there who are really good at figuring out a mystery, and then there are mysteries that are really good at never being figured out. <laughs> Just because you've lived in the same home for years and years doesn't mean you're not in for some surprises every now and again. William and Minnie Winston were an elderly couple in the mid-1980s who had been living happily together in their Atlanta home for over 20 years. They had shared a lot of experiences together in that home, but eventually an experience came that sent a chill down their spines unlike any other. When Minnie, awakening one night, came across blood splattered on the bathroom floor. Minnie quickly woke up William and they both inspected the house to find blood spatter in more than just the bathroom, and they promptly contacted police. Police initiated an investigation but weren't exactly prepared for what they'd find. Inside the house, not only was blood found in the places the Winstons had specified, but it was now found in the bedrooms, on the walls, in the basement, in the kitchen, and under a television set. The amount of blood found was considered to be alarming. Police naturally sought a reasonable explanation. However, they found it a bit hard to come up with one. William regularly underwent kidney dialysis at home, so police assumed that it must have somehow been William's blood, but many insisted that it wasn't. Police decided to collect samples of the blood and took them in for testing, which revealed that the blood was human and type O. Only problem was that William and Minnie were both type A. The origin of the blood still remains unknown to this day and William and Minnie are long gone. But it is said that the house that bled in Southwest Atlanta is still currently occupied. For many people, when bedtime comes, silence is golden. But for Jacqueline Caddow, there was no such thing upon lying her head on her pillow. When nightfall arrived and Jacqueline settled herself into bed, somewhere outside her bedroom window would come a wolf whistle, a whistle often used when a man might find a woman attractive. Over and over, every night, Jacqueline soon became restless, unable to sleep comfortably or find a person responsible. Jacqueline did her best to go about living her life. She had a relationship to tend to, after all. She was deeply in love with a state trooper and eventually announced her engagement to him. How wonderful. But this is when things started to change. The one known simply as the Phantom Whistler had heard the news. The whistling turned from taunting wolf whistles to the tune of a funeral march. At the tail end of each song, the Phantom would break into a blood-curdling moan. Jacqueline and her family were terrified. They couldn't escape the Phantom. He seemed to know every detail of Jacqueline's life, and he was very displeased by her decision to marry, and would often call her at home to tell her that he'd kill her if she went through with the wedding. But soon the Whistler wasn't bound by limitations of the night. Jacqueline, while at work one day, suddenly heard that familiar whistle once again as she had every single night, and in terror and disbelief, collapsed. Yet again, those who searched came up empty-handed. No one could capture the Phantom, leading some to believe he was exactly that. Jacqueline's plight reached newspapers, and even with people passing by her property to try to catch a glimpse of the Phantom and law enforcement actively seeking out the one responsible, no one ever saw a thing. Eventually, Jacqueline stayed with relatives, being unable to remain at home anymore due to the torment from the Phantom. It didn't work. Outside the bedroom window came an all-too-familiar whistle, a funeral march just as before. When she moved to stay with her fiancé's family in another attempt to get away, her mother received a phone call. The voice told her mother to tell Jackie that he knew she was staying with her fiancé's family. But Jacqueline was undeterred by the elusive Phantom Whistler. She married the love of her life regardless, and the Phantom Whistler never stayed true to his promise. If he had been in attendance that day, 
he never said a word nor whistled a single tune. Jacqueline's state trooper husband kept her safe from the phantom who faded back into the shadows for good. Have you ever heard a suspicious sound coming from somewhere inside your house? Probably nothing, of course, just your imagination getting the best of you. Unless it's not. Hinter Kaifeck was a small farmstead in 1920s Germany that housed an extended family, an older couple with their widowed daughter and her two young children, aged seven and two. The family also kept a maid in their employ until one day when the maid decided that it was time to go. She complained that the house was surely haunted and that she was very uncomfortable staying there, not worth the money. So she packed up her things and quit, leaving the creepy farm behind. Truth be told, this decision was the best one she could have made. Though the family didn't exactly buy into anything paranormal happening with their farm, there were a few peculiar things that happened that the father made his neighbors aware of. He told them one winter, six months after their maid had left, that he had found a mysterious set of footprints out in the snow, leading from the darkened tree line towards his farm. The footprints only went one way and did not extend past his farm and did not return back to the trees. Unfortunately, he thought little of this. The family went on to experience strange noises coming from the attic, some of which sounded like footsteps. They found an odd newspaper that had no place being on their farm and their house keys went missing. None of this was reported to the police and the family continued on business as usual, which would turn into a very terrible decision. The family decided to hire a new maid. The woman arrived at the house just before nightfall. Such poor timing. That very night, only hours after the maid had arrived, the entire family, including the maid, were slaughtered. One by one, members of the family were led into the barn where they were chopped to death with a mattock. The father, mother, their daughter, and her daughter were all brutally murdered. Afterwards, the killer stalked inside the house and butchered the daughter's two-year-old son in his cot before moving into the maid's chamber and massacring her. The murders went unreported for some time as neighbors still saw smoke rising from their chimney. When neighbors notified police that no one from the family had been seen in days, they went to investigate and stumbled upon the gruesome scene. Whoever had murdered the inhabitants of Hinter Kaifek had remained on the property and was even sure to have fed the animals. Though there was a large amount of money and valuables in the home at the time of the murders, it was never touched. When they found the body of the seven-year-old daughter in the barn, they had determined she had remained alive for hours after the murder of her family and had witnessed it. For unknown reasons, she had ripped out clumps of her own hair before she died. The farm was torn down the following year in 1923, and to this day, the case remains unsolved. The world is full of eerie mysteries, but don't you worry too much. It's very unlikely that you'll become part of one. But I suppose that's what all of these people thought as well. That's all for now. Remember, you may not believe it, but anything is possible in a world so seriously strange. I'm Rob Dyke, and I'll see you next Wednesday. So don't forget to subscribe, because you won't want to miss it.